This is my 100 hour review on the Rix Pocket K3 thermal scanner. I've got this as right around the time it released and with as much hunting as we do, I've got the hours in to give you my 100 hour review and what I think about this particular model. I guess first thing is, is you know, why would somebody want to run a scanner when say they got a nice 640 sitting back here? I didn't run a lot of scanners until recently. I run the uh, you know smaller AGMs, uh, and now I've got a hold of the K3, so I've, I've run a scanner a lot more dedicated than I have in the past. And with that being said, I can guarantee you that this has cost a few coyotes their lives. And the reason I say that is, you know, we use this going in and out of fields a lot, going through areas where fields connect, where we'll walk in and out of. Well benefit behind this is besides it being extremely lightweight and small is I can just keep it right in my chest rig I can pop it out I can scan around and see what is out there and not miss an opportunity that's the big thing um, for instance last weekend we we pulled into a field I handed my buddy the scanner because all the corn was on that side for him he started scanning around there's a coyote sitting out there at 300 yards um, so there was our opportunity if we would have just drove on into where we normally would have set up, we probably would have lost that opportunity. Another one was we were about to leave a sit. We're at that 20, 25 minute mark where we normally go ahead and start moving. Um, I started kind of just scanning around one last time with the scanner instead of with the gun because I can do it pretty quick. And there was two coming from several hundred yards away about to cross the ditch line. I just so happened to pick up their heat signature. I was like, ooh, that looks like a coyote. Jumped on my gun, figured out that's exactly what they were, and there were. We got to end up getting a double out of it. So my recommendation is if even if you are running a nicer 640 unit or even a good 384, having something this small and compact sitting with you at all times has been greatly beneficial another thing i like is you know any guys that spend a lot of time behind when you, your eyes get kind of burnt out with this i can switch i can switch my non-dominant eye and i can kind of scan around and give my right eye a little bit of relief for a little while and i have to constantly stay behind the gun that's another benefit i really i really enjoyed about having a scanner and running it more and more is that benefit now specifically onto the k3 this unit is relatively small uh, i have a maven laser rangefinder to compare it to the maven mavens are a little bit larger than say like the vortex rangefinders but it gives you a somewhat a comparison i mean it's about the size of a, a little bit smaller than a smartphone and probably weighs a little bit less too so there's really no added weight i keep mine right here in my chest rig i just keep it clipped on right to the front i can pass it to my buddies they can use it and then if like we were just talking about I see something I like. I literally just dropped it, dropped on, got on the gun, and, and went to work. Um, this particular one, though, I, I will say a few of the things I do really like about it is it does have an actual slide-in cover. So instead of just a pop-off piece, um, I know a few of the thir uh, scanners out there run those. They're rubber. This will actually stay in place. Um, another thing I have liked about it is the buttons on the front you can see the power button is higher than these three which are in small little indentations um i like that for the simple reason of finding the standby button the way the k3 is set up is you can just press the button once and go into standby press it once and it comes out so like you know with your scopes when you put them in standby mode you have to press and hold them um, this one you just hit the front button so that kind of leads me into the batteries this unit does take an 18650 right here in the back um, I do like that. Everything I have runs in 18650, so I just keep a few on me. Now, battery life on this unit, it's not extremely cold here in eastern North Carolina yet, so I hadn't really had to put the battery to the test. I'm typically getting probably six-ish hours out of a battery before I decide to change it out. Not before the unit's dead, but before I decide to change it out. And what that's saying is it's, it's on red and it's going to go out at some point anyway. I normally leave this on standby all night long. From the first sit, I turn it on, and I just run it in and out of standby mode throughout the night. I'm constantly doing the auto nuke um, or manually nuking it, which just press and hold the front button up here. 
Um, and the only reason I do that manually, even though it does have an auto nook feature in it, is I've noticed like going across like say a bean field where there's a lot of high humidity above it and then I might scan down say a path. The, the differences in the humidity, um, I've seen a difference in the picture quality. And so instead of allowing the auto nuke to do the job, I'm impatient. I just press and hold it. I get it to do it. And I get my image clarity, clarity back. So um, and it's been easy to find with those valleys in the front here. So identification, that's the big thing. That's what everybody wants to know about when it comes down to thermals. Are you going to identify a coyote at six, 700 yards? No, um, not in my experience. I will say I have seen the brow tines on deer here being they're still in velvet or were at the time um, around three three fiftieths. I have picked up coyotes around three three fifty. Um, mannerisms are typically the big thing to let you know what an animal is. I have seen one at five thirty, and I had an idea. I felt like yep, that's a coyote just based off its mannerisms, and I just verified it with my scope. So. This isn't a replacement for the scope on the gun by any means. This is more just an add to to give you more chances so you don't miss out on opportunities. Um, I do like how light this unit is. Like I keep it in my chest rig, as I said. Um, that's been real nice. The, the picture clarity is pretty good. I'll make sure at the end of the video I put in a bunch of videos and stuff I have taken. Sadly, I really don't have a lot of coyotes because... I always forget to hit the record button. I'll just see them. I go to the gun, hit record on the gun, and then we get the rest of the footage. Um, I do have some deer and stuff like that in there at, at distances and different humidity levels. Right now, Eastern North Carolina, most of the humidity around here is between 80 and 100%, which is about the worst you could get for a thermal sensor is high humidity. So we're seeing a lot of that right now. I'm sure come wintertime, clarity's going to get a whole lot better. But um it does fit real well in your hands i don't have really big hands i'm six foot 200 pound guy so it fits real well in my hands I don't have any problems there um the there's a usb port on the side of it for any kind of updates or pulling pictures off of it i've used a rix app and i haven't had any issues getting any of my footage off of this through the rix app so i really hadn't had to use the usb port on the side of it all um, on this side here we have our focus and then going back to the top, which also at the end of the video, I will show you what each of these buttons do through different menu settings. Um, we have our on off and then we have our zoom menu and then record or press and hold to get a picture. So overall, I've been very impressed with this, especially for the price. I think this one normally runs for like 800 bucks. So you're at a 384 unit. It is a 15 millimeter objective lens, so it's not huge but it is a 384 sensor and the refresh rate i will say is 50 hertz so i have walked around a lot holding this up to my eye and not felt any kind of nausea uh, or a kind of motion sickness from just walking around scanning because we've used it before like going down rows of like cut corn that haven't been bush hogged yet you know if we've dropped a coyote out there and we can just kind of walk down those rows and just kind of scan until we find where exactly where he was um and I've never felt that kind of nauseousness. So the refresh rate is quick enough that th there's not been a problem there. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think for a sub $1,000 um, scanner, you really can't go wrong here, uh, especially for a 384 unit. If, you know, if you're the guys that are doing uh, raccoon hunting and stuff and you're not needing to see anything at far distances, I'm sure the 256 will be fine. I have not used the 256 version of this. I've only used the 384, so I can only speak to that. So I hope that guy, that kind of helps you guys out some on what this unit can can do, just in my opinion. Um, I've got a lot of hours behind it now. I, I really don't have any cons, to be truthful. Um, for the price and for the performance, I think Rick's kind of knocked this one out of the park. With that, um, yes, you could go and get a 25 millimeter objective in a 384, but that's going to probably cost you another five, six hundred dollars from what I've seen and used. So, for sub 1000 and still in a 384, I think they have done a fantastic job with this unit. And uh, I hope 
like I said, I hope this guy helps you out. If you got any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media. I'd be more than happy to get you any footage that you would like. Uh, just hopefully to give you more information uh, to make you have a good decision on what you want to do. But until then, have a good one. All right, so we're going to power the unit on. I'm going to hit the back button to record this. Let's see what we have here. Start out going, we'll go through the zoom. One, two, four, and then back to one. Then we will look at the color palettes, which will be the middle button. And then if you press and hold the middle button, you get into your menu. So right now it's on the Wi-Fi. That's for information. That will be your brightness, your image contrast. Rain or sign, this is a feature of the Rix K3. I haven't really used it, so I can't really speak a lot for this. Auto image correction, I normally keep that on. And then we will go.